Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We have a Christmas special today. Tis the season. But before we begin, Ed, what can people buy from you? Tis the season for blood and guts. <laughs> Red and green room? <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor is where I'm serializing my current comics project. Uh, uh, murder on the dark web for fun and profit, Jim. Exploring that a world where that's going down. Genius. And... Uh, the Patreon is for the early adopters. Three bucks will get you the archive. Issue one is up there right at this moment, and I put new strips up every Tuesday. Uh, we sold out of the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus, but they are still in stores, and you can find them at some online shops. But the other big uh, book that I had come out this year is uh, quite literally just that, the Episcopal Studio Edition, and uh, we printed up limited quantities of these. Uh, they're going fast. A lot bigger than a normal comic. I can't even see the Christmas special under this thing. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Good for pressing comics. <laughs> Go find this on online or in uh, finer comic stores anywhere. I am happy to say that my latest graphic novel, The Plain Janes, was named to NPR's Best of 2020 list this year. This is a perfect gift for this time of year for the young adult in your life or the young budding art student in your life or anybody that's interested in art. It's about a bunch of high school rejects that turn to public art and guerrilla art making to spice up their boring suburban life and quickly run afoul of local law enforcement and all the popular kids, but it doesn't stop them. So The Plain Janes, uh, available now wherever comics are sold. Good character designs on those, on those kids. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about the Lobo Paramilitary Christmas Special. Keith Giffen, Alan Grant writing, Simon Bisley on art. I love this comic, man. This is probably the height of my Bisley fandom. I think this comes out between the first and second Lobo miniseries that Simon Bisley drew. And I mean, that thing just kind of blew my mind whenever I first saw it. So a Christmas special with Lobo's bloody knife standing over Superman. Yes, please. Right. And that knife is beginning those sh those shades of... Uh, I like to think this is an influence on Jay Lee's Youngblood Strike File because that is a gruesome-looking instrument. I, th I think you uh, would be right, Jimmy. <laughs> I love that there's, like, warnings on it. <laughs> I, I mean, they, it, like, you use every part of the animal. Uh, this is, I think, 1991. So just before Image Comics, but, you know, certainly this is one of those characters that is so 90s. The, the Bisley Lobo is... I don't know when else it could exist. The, the kids use a term uh, called called edgelord. Uh, like, and this is like edgelord comics. You know, bravado, machismo, going over the top, trying to uh, be a provocateur, trying to get a reaction out of people. That's exactly what this is. That's a perfect description. The story starts with this framing device of a, of a couple with some kids that they're afraid of on a Christmas Eve where they don't really have any gifts for their kids. And they are scared of what's going to happen. So no job, no money, no prospects, no Christmas. They found a book to, uh, to help them through this, to figure out what to do in this situation. The color is really, uh, really interesting on this, man. It makes me think of like uh, Ted, some of the color Ted McKeever stuff. Very interesting choices. It's Laverne Kanzerski, and she colored the at least the first miniseries. And I like that color, too. You know, part of the appeal for me on, on Lobo is... is the whole package, you know, it does look colorful, and I like that. You know, it's kind of a uh, contrast between the grotesque artwork and the violence that we're seeing, but then it's colored with this, like, very cartoony palette. Beautiful lettering on this page as well. And that's Gaspar Saladino yeah. on letters. I don't know if he lettered the original miniseries or not, but yeah, I mean, I, I think these are really good-looking comics. Uh, whether you're in favor of the subject matter or not, I, of course, am. Uh, Lobo and his dog. And so this is now... I don't know if we're inside of the book, if that's the conceit that we're reading this book or what, because there's going to be some future repercussions based on these events. But nevertheless, we are following Lobo at this point, who is hired by the Easter Bunny to off Santa Claus. I'm such a fan of the uh, Simon Bisley ink line. Yes. Uh, it, has, it has so much so much life to it. And the anatomy stuff is so good and really feels referenced. I am imagining that for some of this stuff, Biz is busting open like those big muscle books that you would see, those muscle magazines that you would see in, you know, Shop and Save, Flex magazine and shit like that. Yeah, probably. I mean, he's certainly part of that cartoonist history of like the cartoonist that also bodybuild a bit. So wouldn't be surprising. Although I saw Greg Capullo post recently and it was sketchbook pages. 
and it was just this kind of thing, just arms, hands, fingers, you know, whatever it is, but pages of it. And it was in reference to, then he showed a drawing and he's like, when people see a drawing like this and they think that I'm photo referencing, it's because of the thousands of pages of these sketchbooks. So you never know. I'm sure there were, there were some bodybuilding reference at some point, but man, he's so good. It's uh, it may be internalized by now. But Lobo's story, he's this bounty hunter. Basically, you hire him to uh, to do whatever hitman kind of jobs you want done, and he always delivers. So once he agrees to terms with this Easter bunny, Santa Claus is good as dead. Always love that he has some kind of cool bike that he drives around. It's all the stuff that you love from the miniseries. His pet dolphins, his space dolphins. <laughs> his treasure trail. <laughs> I think that is in, the, in in all of the Bisley Lobos. <laughs> all right, man. Off he goes to the North Pole. This is pretty cool looking. I think these are probably mountains, but they remind me of like Northern Lights, which would be a nice touch if you were doing a Santa Claus North Pole story. And you can see this compound is not quite what we expect out of uh, Christmas lore. You know, this is this is a factory, man. They're making toys in there. Maybe a more practical version of uh, of, of the North Pole operation. <laughs> and he's looking about how to get in there. I do love this version, right? Like the keep out signs, the razor wire on top, but it's not going to stop him. Kills a couple of elves, and he's basically in. <laughs> Killing elves. <laughs> Setting up explos explosives. And you see some of the toys that the elves are prepping for their Christmas, again, with that very colorful kind of, kind of palette. But even like the stuff that's not toys, like notice like the use of pinks and purples and things. Uh, even on that previous page where we first get that shot of the uh, the factory, I mean, he's they're using every color in the palette, and you you have to know color to be able to do that. I think it fits so well with a character like this. You know, it really highlights his cartoony characteristics, which I think a lot of people that hated him they skip over that part. Right. This is Looney Tunes. You know, two generations later, but it still has that kind of strange energy. All right, so he's inside, going through these defenses and, and basically fighting his way to try to get to the heart of this compound. <laughs> and those poor elves, they're outgunned. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to stand up to it. The dog, I think, is new in, in this one. I don't think he was in the original miniseries. Great design. Yeah, I love the dog. Fun money shots of Lobo coming through. There's more of those kind of J. Lee proportions and... Stuff and violence. Would... <laughs> Feels like this could be a tryout for the uh, the Young Blood Strike file. I do wonder if Biz is the guy that like kind of brought. No, I, I guess Sinkevich brought Spatter to uh, the yeah. comic page. I always saw a lot of Sinkevich in in his line work. Yeah, and he had, he would admit that in those winter, wizard interviews that we would uh, be discussing. Gotta love this, right? That's, that's a great head wound. Yeah, so cartoony. This is the stuff that I would love in these, you know, because I probably bought this one off of the newsstand, so. Other comics really weren't looking like this from from that from where I was buying these from. Yeah, this is a long way from your comics code kind of stuff. Yeah, it's my seal of approval with that gore. Intestines coming out, arms severed. <laughs> silly guns too. I like his version of like the silly guns better than a lot of the image version of made up guns because there are little little references to realistic stuff like the revolver. Although having revolver and clip may be a little overkill, but three <laughs> barrels. What are you gonna do? This is a funny cartoon pose where your arms are crisscrossing and you're shooting opposite directions. I feel like you might find that in like a John Woo movie. Also, a lot of shell casings flying around this issue. Stephen Platt, a couple years from now. <laughs> the dog gets an elf to chew on. <laughs> he gets his Christmas present. Man. He eats that elf. Like all that's left is an arm and a bone, a couple <laughs> fingers and an eyeball, and then he's farting him out. Ah, oh, it's so gross. It's amazing. But he's through the elves now, so we're, we're, we're coming to uh, the reason that we're here is once that elf line of defense is over, let's work your way to Superman. There's nobody standing in the way, and there's Superman with his uh, big stogie. He heard the ruckus. He's waiting on him, and he has a gorilla. <laughs> Good build on that, that, uh, that Santa. Oh, man, it's all top-notch. I read this comic, and it's like, why isn't Santa Claus cooler? Like, this is, this is a great Santa Claus. I would read a comic featuring this Santa Claus kicking ass. Of course, you need Bisley to draw it. Exactly, because like you see pe people try to do that kind of thing. And it's... This is the other part that I, that I think people miss on Lobo is just the drawing. You know, like, you can just look at that panel and just the snout of that gorilla is amazing. Like, do a gorilla comic, right? I, th I think Bisley just did a uh, 
Kickstarter for for some kind of like drawing tutorial thing, and he showed off like you know episode one. Is it like proportions of the figure? Is it you know this or that? It was drawing a fucking horse skull, <laughs> and then in pencil <laughs> and then in ink he, he drew like a proper like horse head over top of it. Wow! So this motherfucker knows. That's shit. that's amazing. <laughs> All right, so Santa Claus is going to take his medicine like a man, and he says, let's do it with these knives. I like those knives, too. Yeah, man. Not a conventional knife, but here we go. And they are slicing each other up. How about that for a pretty badass character? Outlaw as hell. Like Lobo's going to gonna shrink away from a knife fight. I don't think so. And then just the graphic violence, man. Once the blood starts flowing, Santa punches punches his eyeball out. Shades of, of uh, Big Van Vader having his eyeball knocked out in Japan and continuing the match. Maybe uh, Lobo's eyesight isn't good just like Stan Hansen's isn't. <laughs> it could be, man. It could be, although I think he's hitting him right right on the money. Nose just spraying blood out of it and, uh, and right back at you. But now Santa's eyeball is flopping around through the rest of the sequence. Just like Van Vader. Amazing. Until... Lobo delivers the, uh, gets the upper hand and hacks his neck off. And we see the headless corpse of Santa here spurting blood out of his neck. That's what happens, man. Yes. <laughs> Seasons, greetings, fats. <laughs> <laughs> Drops the knife, getting ready to uh, call it a job. But before he can leave, he comes across this list of naughty and nice and realizes, like, those naughty people might grow up and give him some problems in the future and of course the nice people will you know lobo <laughs> those are just victims right <laughs> so he puts this assembly line to work making bombs that he is going to then put those lists to work and use and uh the gorilla throughout this whole comic i love like anytime you see him doing something it's a really well-drawn gorilla doing stuff i feel like that should have become his tag team partner for future future uh comic issues of this but unfortunately, I think this is it. We do see him draw gorillas in some places. Look at the messed up coloring. The green, little, the two little swatches of green on the floor. Yeah, very curious. Strange mistake. Somebody's spilling some ink on those color separations. And then off he goes with his bombs and all the reindeers. You know, you could see, like, little lens flare. Like, this looks like very early, I guess, computer color. And you, yeah. see, and you see, like, you see, like, the little white flares there so if you go back let me see if these shapes are trapped completely yes i think we're looking at what was a green piece of ground at right. first and then uh they're like nope color drop let's make it brown We've got a couple pieces i think you're right and that that uh early coloring thing like there there were a couple of spots like where you'll see his face where you can see it's it's a it's a like feathered edge yeah you know it's like an airbrush tool or something that they're coloring some of these spots with pretty early uh you know digital technique but he's got all his bombs loaded up, and now he's off, uh, off to off to deliver these to the uh, the naughty and nice, calling the reindeer on Fragger, on Bastich, on uh, Scuzzball, <laughs> and dropping bombs, man. Mushroom clouds in the background as as Lobo's kicking back and letting the reindeer and that gorilla do all the hard work, and then we get to the wrap up bookend sequences of this family who uh, is scared of their kids, has no gifts, and is going to go and uh, solve that problem. <laughs> I guess pretty brutal. If you guys at home love this, I don't know if you know, there are two sequels. It's Authority versus Lobo, and uh, these are independent. They're, they're Well, they're not independent, but I mean, it's not a two-part series. These are both one-shots, and they're both drawn by Bisley. So it's kind of cool to see Bisley revisiting Lobo all those years later, and... Uh, fighting the authority who were sort of the transgressive, you know, hot shots at this time period. And you basically get to see the main man face off against the authority in a, uh, in a Christmas bloodbath <laughs> as, as uh, fitting both sets of characters there, but kind of, kind of weird that these exist. And it's the same team. Yeah. Giffen and, and Alan Grant are back. So kind of, kind of oddball objects. And look, this is the one you want for sure. This, this is your prime Christmas special. But kind of cool that the legacy of this is that it spawned two more one shots because of the success of this. I think there's even like a um, like a sh short fan film that used to float around on the internet with this stuff. Except no substitute. You want the paramilitary Christmas special? This is prime Bisley. But uh, kind of cool that it 
that it, that it lives on, not just in my memory. <laughs> right. You're going to find this, too, man. There were a million of these yeah, things these sold that, were, well. that were published. You could find those in the dollar bins for sure, man. What do you say, Jimmy Bounce? Yep. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next vids are available. What books you got? I have Plain Jane's Fresh Off NPR's 2020 Best of List, Perfect for the Young Adult Reader in Your Life or the Art Fan, Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive, available from Image Comics, wherever comics are sold, and October on in 1976, the first Blacklight comic. Great for both comic readers and people that are just fans of cool art. Patreon.com slash Ed is where I'm serializing my current comics project, Red Room. Three bucks will get you to the archive on that. Uh, X-Men Grand Design Omnibus is out in stores and out of our warehouses. So get it, get it where you can find it. Uh, right now, the Ed Piscor Studio Edition is selling out quickly, but they're still available. So scoop that up before Christmas is upon us. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything that we are doing. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them one more set of merchandise, Jimmy, and we'll be out. Gift more comics.